Remember this game? It's been talked about a lot. Game Studio bypasses Nintendo's seal of approval and the courts are on their side. Nintendo can't fight back directly, but can threaten retailers. Sales wither, so Game Studio moves to the Christian video game market, untouchable. Story for the ages. But I think a lot of people kind of skip over the logistics of that last step. Where were they selling these games? A, a Christian bookstore? Uh, what? How? Uh, well, for those who haven't set foot inside such a store, such as me and my two decade streak, I'd like to explain. They're called bookstores because they mostly have books, but they have other media too. Movies, more traditionally, video games since 1991, and of course, music. Traditionally, this would be gospel and praise and worship and such, but I don't know when this started, but for quite a while, Christianity has been very keen to be hip. That youth pastor meme exists for a reason. It's among us. It's a so with that in mind, I'd like to show you the funniest CD that I own. Behold, the year is 1993. Some guys from Texas hear about the rave scene that's going wild in the UK. They bring it overseas and spritz it with some holy water. This is the result. Well, not this specifically. This is their second album, but their first was still from 1993, so whatever. Look at it, though. I mean, I don't know if this album art is a riff on some other breakbeat hardcore album, but the CD sure is. This ain't the prodigy. This is the prodigal sons. Similarly, the track names are all wordplay, and it's great. James Brown is dead? I think you mean Satan is dead. You've heard of the three wise men. Now get ready for the three or three wise man. Psalm 150 beats per minute. The 1790s in America saw a significant rise in the spread and adoption of Christianity. This is sometimes referred to as the Protestant revival. But we're in 1993, so this time it's the revival. Firestarter, more like fire. Brand Psalms 1023. I, I get no, it didn't exist yet. Yeah, the other half of these tracks are just Christian imagery. The funniest part, though, it it's good. Sometimes some of the chopped samples are unfortunate, especially after being trapped in amber for 30 years. Some of the tracks are just a bit silly. Some of the messaging is straight up uncomfortable. But then you hear stuff like this. And this rabbit hole goes deep. I haven't fully explored it. Apparently there was an entire record label dedicated to Christian rave music called In Soul. I, I guess they're defunct now. They have a Twitter, but it's been nothing but automated tweets about their follower accounts since 2016. I'm going to leave you with two retro In Soul recommendations, both on YouTube. In 1998, Faith Massive released a drum and bass for the masses. And it's some incredibly solid liquid D&B, start to finish. Watch out for the jump scare at the end of track 9. In 1995, Paradigm Shift put out a self-titled album exactly 10 years after the completely unrelated, secular, eponymous Paradigm Shift album. The Halal one is Chemical Breaks, pure raw vibes that somehow haven't aged a day. It fits right alongside Crystal Method. <laughs> There's probably more gold to find on this record label, but nothing else caught my attention when I did my digging. It's kind of wild enough to know that it existed at all. You're a Christian. Yeah. And you're a rapist. Yeah. But you don't do drugs. No. You don't do anything immoral. No.